Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome friends uh, to uh, this course on thermomechanical processing and thermochemical processing and uh, uh, this will uh, I hope will help you in, uh, in understanding the whole thermomechanical uh, and thermochemical uh, processing which is used in the industry. Uh, if you lo look at typical material processing stages, okay, uh, usually the if you are doing any bulk processing usually you start with a melt route that means you will do a ingot casting ok. So, these are big ingots ok in which you have to pour molten uh, metal whichever material we are working with aluminum, steel whatever ok and then you allow it to cast ok. And uh, then this uh, solid material will be processed uh, further ok. For example, there can be a hot rolling process ok, where initial processing will be what we will call as rough uh, roughing ok. And uh, in that you will be uh, supplying or you will be imposing higher strain in the material ok and this will be done at higher temperature obviously. And then you go further to what we call as finishing uh, processes that is uh, there you apply lower strain and usually finishing operations are done at uh, lower temperatures. So, that you can get good surface finish and uh, uh, also the, uh, the dimensional tolerance will be much better ok. And the last one as I was telling you that it can be cold rolling and uh, there are some pictures here just to give you an uh, uh, idea of the scale in which the industry work ok, because in uh, in the laboratory it will be a very small scale rolling mill uh, and so on ok. So, these are uh, rolling mills and you can see that these are continuous uh, rolls are there. So, the strain will be imposed in multiple stages in the material you do not want to impose very high strain in one, uh, one go ok. Similarly, this is a, uh, a process where uh, the molten metal from the from the uh, this ladle is being poured into the ingots ok. So, again you can see the size this is the size of a man sit standing there controlling the whole operation and the size of the ladle and ingot and similarly the size of the rolling mill ok that gives you an idea of the scale in which industry works. So, it is always a challenge to do experiments in the laboratory scale and kind of uh, implement them uh, where the processing will be done in a bulk uh, condition and, and control of temperature strain and strain rent will not be that uh, precise ok. And to that we want to give uh, some, some uh, suggestion that if the processing will be done like this it will be a, uh, you will get better properties, better microstructure and so on. So, actually why we do thermomechanical processing ok. And the thermochemical part uh, will be introduced to you by Professor Sairam Mehta when his lectures will start uh, after the lectures on thermomechanical processing will be over uh, after 30 lectures. So, before his lectures will start he will give you a, a brief introduction ok. So, I am taking right now the thermomechanical processing introduction right now. And uh, the objective of thermomechanical processing is first is to break the cast dendritic structure ok. So, when you do any casting process ok, usually the microstructure which you get is what you can see in this micrograph here ok. So, these are called dendrites ok. So, dendrite is a tree like structure ok and uh, you can see that there is a for example, a, a, a central branch here then there are secondary branches coming out of it ok. 
at uh, different places you can see a, a, a main branch is going and then there are secondary branches sometimes there will be tertiary branches and so on ok. So, this is a typical dendritic structure and uh, as you can see because of the etching effect you can see that this look uh, uh, different uh, color and you can see between two dendritic structure there is some different uh, contrast is there ok. So, usually this is the dendrite has lower solute content and between two dendrites we call it as an interdendritic region it, it contains more solute ok. So, or lot of intermetallics form in this region ok. So, the dendrite will be relatively solute poor ok and the interdendritic region will have more solute content ok. So, this uh, structure is not good for mechanical properties I will uh, show you in the next couple of slides ok. So, the first objective is to break the cast dendritic structure. The second objective is uh, when you are breaking this uh, cast dendritic structure uh, we want to also refine the microstructure ok. So, you can see this dendrites sometimes are very big in size ok. So, we want to reduce the size of the dendrite. Uh, first break it and then we want to refine the microstructure ok. So, that is our second objective of thermomechanical processing to refine the microstructure and also a very important objective uh, gaining lot of importance nowadays is to control the crystallographic texture. So, we will see what do we mean by crystallographic texture ok and that is uh, that also controls uh, mechanical property to a great extent ok good choice of uh, texture will give you much better properties. So, what is the problem with cast structure ok. So, they have dendritic structure and as I told you they have lower solute content and interdendritic structure ha have, have higher solute content and usually intermetallic phases will be there which are brittle in nature ok. So, you can see this is a S cast structure of AZ 91 alloy ok and the, the dendrites are relatively solute poor ok, where the interdendritic region this is the interdendritic region and this is my uh, dendrites ok, uh, they are solute poor. Uh, if you do a solutionizing that means, if you allow uh, you take it this material to high temperature keep it for sufficient amount of time then what will happen this solute because there is a segregation of solute, uh, solute is having different composition in different places there will be diffusion ok. And slowly if you see that the solute is now diffusing and the, the thickness of this layer if you see in the solutionized material has reduced considerably ok. So, now it has reduced considerably and the continuous uh, network of interdentritic region as you can see these are all continuous ok without any break that is now breaking. So, you have lot of places where there is break in the interdentritic region. So, the first process for any cast structure is to uh, uniform uh, you to, to redistribute the solute ok and have a uniform more or less uniform or homogenized composition throughout the material. So, that is the first thing ok, but still you have uh, that dendritic structure there ok, only the solute content is distributed ok. So, the next one is to break this dendritic structure that is what is the objective of thermomechanical processing ok. So, if you look at the mechanical properties of the cast structure as I told you these are not very good ok, strength and ductility will both will be very low ok and the reason is that cast structure contains porosities and cavities ok and also as I told you about dendritic region. and uh, uh, any crack will uh, can easily initiate on these porosities and ca cavities ok. And once it nucleates it can easily propagate through interdendritic region ok. So, as I told you there is an interdendritic region which contains intermetallic particles has a continuous uh, first thing is has a continuous structure and they are also brittle. So, once a crack is initiated as you can see this crack is going through this interdendritic region in a very nice fashion ok. You can see that this crack is go growing through the interdendritic region it is separating two dendrites ok. 
And uh, also as you can see in this micrograph that uh, cast structure contained large number of cavities and porosities okay, which can act as a nucleation site and once it nucleates it can easy the crack can easily propagate through the interdentitic region. Okay. So, because of this the cast structure is always not considered a good choice for mechanical properties. Okay. However, in some cases where you cannot uh, uh, have any other way of fabrication fabricating a component you use cast structures, but then you uh, have to uh, ensure that there are not uh, very high stresses applied on the component. Okay. It is relatively kind of stress free only the component is there just to uh, because you do not have any other fabrication method to make that kind of component. The other uh, reason to do thermomechanical processing is grain refinement okay. and why we want to do grain refinement or microstructure refinement is to increase the strength. Okay. And how the strength increase because of the hall patch relationship okay, which says that the stress will be dependent on the grain size to the power halves and the grain size is in the denominator. Okay. So, that means if grain size is re you reduce the grain size okay, the, the flow stress will increase okay. and you can see that effect here in the micrograph. So, on the x axis you have d to the power minus half is plotted okay. and on the y axis we have stress and you can see as we are increasing d to the power minus half okay. that means we are decreasing the grain size the, the yield stress of the material is increasing. Okay. So, this is the effect of uh, grain size reduction. Okay. So, that is always uh, what we uh, like to have. How I can do the grain refinement? Now, as I told you, uh, we want to do thermomechanical processing. So, this is the effect of thermomechanical processing on the grain size. Okay. So, basically, when you are doing thermomechanical processing, you are controlling strain rate and temperature and, of course, strain also. So, when you are deforming at higher temperatures okay, and lower strain rate, then the grain size will be high or it will be more okay. and both the, this effect can be easily captured by a parameter called zener holoman parameter okay, which has both temperature and strain rate. So, straight this strain rate and this temperature. Okay. So, when the strain rate, rate is you are reducing okay, and because temperature is in the denominator, denominator and has a also it is within the exponential. So, effect is exponential here of temperature. So, if you are increasing the temperature and reducing the strain rate, then the z will reduce. Okay. If you are increasing the strain rate and reducing the temperature, okay, the z will be more. Okay. So, higher strain rate, lower temperature will uh, promote uh, lower grain size as you can see in this micrograph, in this graph where on x axis ln of z is plotted and on y axis the grain size is plotted, ln of grain size is plotted. You can see as the z is increasing, okay, as z is increasing, okay, my grain size is reducing. So, that is the effect of thermomechanical processing that control of temperature strain rate and of course, strain also. Okay. So, control of temperature and strain rate to refine the microstructure. So, if I do processing at lower temperature and higher strain rates, I will be able to get finer grain microstructure. Of course, there are other effects also we have to consider whether if we are in doing this, whether we are introducing any defect in the material, then it makes no sense just to refine the microstructure if there are, there are defects in the material because the defects will bring down the strength and ductility both. Okay. The other part is as I told you about controlling texture and the, the effect of that is sh shown here. Okay. You can see there are two cups uh, which are uh, drawn. Okay. So, you have a die and a punch, okay. punch is forcing the material to deform. Okay. So, in one case you can see a very nice cup is formed okay, with a uniform uh, surface on or uniform top. Okay, whereas, in this case you can see there, are, there is a formation of what we call it, call it as ear. Okay. 
it is like our ear okay and uh, the problem with this is that because of this formation of ear you have uh, more thinning in these regions okay wherever the ear is formed then the these regions so this is thickness is lower and in this part thickness is more also when you want to use it you have to remove this how much amount of material from the cup okay so this will go as waste and so ideally we want uh, 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 forming like the like this okay and the use of these is basically you can see that uh, nowadays uh, the, the cold drinks which you get in aluminum cans okay the, you can see that this kind of deep drawing okay a very large uh, drawing uh, formability you need in in a material where you want to have this size of the can okay so you can't afford to have ear formation okay and that can be reduced by having the or by controlling the texture we will see the details of texture when we will discuss that okay but right now you just take it from me that uh, texture is basically the orientation of uh, the unit cells are there in each grain okay so how these unit cells are oriented if they are oriented randomly okay you will see a uh, random texture you can see the points all over the place okay whereas in this case all the cubes or all the unit cells are oriented in one particular fashion and that is why you can see a very strong texture in this material so by controlling this particular orientation of unit cell within each grain okay uh, of course you have to do uh, uh, processing for that then you will be you can you will be able to have a, uh, a forming which is desirable okay so now just to look at what are the different thermomechanical processes are there okay i have divided this thermomechanical process in two categories one what we call as conventional thermomechanical processing which is based on compression compressive stress uh, st strains okay that means when you, you want to deform the material or change or impose the strain or change the cross sectional area okay you are doing it under compression okay and for example our conventional processing like forging rolling and extrusion comes in this category there is another uh, uh, category which is now what we call as non conventional thermomechanical processing or uh, a more popular name is severe plastic deformation svd processes these are based on shear strain uh, so the deformation or the strain is imposed in under shear condition okay so all your e this equal channel angular pressing or accumulated roll bonding of course is through rolling compression basis but lot of shear strain actually are uh, induced in the material and which actually helps in bonding as well as grain refinement high pressure torsion multi axial forging is of course based on compression uh, method that is why i have colored it in a different way then you have friction stir processing and so on okay so all these uh, processes are based on shear strain uh, uh, idea and that is why you are able to impose more strain in one cycle in these processes as compared to compression based uh, deformation processes so basically as i told you the scale in the first slide okay so we want to give suggestion to industry uh, based on what we are doing in the lab okay so basically we are trying to simulate physically simulate the process in the lab okay so if it is a compression based uh, uh, process then we will do a simple compression test okay at different strain rate temperature and so on for different strain levels okay to find out that what is the change in the flow stress or any change in the microstructure or uh, and then we have to imp implement these results in the in the industry okay so and if you are doing any spd based process then we will try to simulate you that using some torsion experiment okay where we are uh, applying the shear strain in the material okay so this type of physical simulations are usually done uh, in laboratory to implement the solution in the industry okay and the output when you do this simulation is is basically in terms of flow stress curves okay so as as you can see 
there are two flow stress curve shown here at two different temperatures the deformation was carried out okay and the strain rates are shown here okay so strain rate is increasing in this direction so two different temperatures at different strain rates you get flow stress curves okay and um, through that we kind of try to understand that what are the mechanism uh, uh, involved during the deformation process okay so for example if there is any strain hardening then we we, we know that there is dislocation multiplication or grain growth is taking place or, or if there is any strain softening as a function of strain if the flow stress is coming down then we know that dislocation annihilation is there through recovery process or recrystallization is taking place okay or if any steady state is there there then you know dynamic recovery or basically generation annihilations have, uh, have balanced each other okay so that is the steady state condition so the, all these type of flow stress curves you can see uh, 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 when you are doing this kind of deformation and then we use this output to to get uh, what we call as constitutive equations okay so basically constitutive equation is the relation between the stress strain rate and temperature okay so we established the constitutive equation for each material that what is the response of material in terms of stress okay as a function of strain rate and temperature so that helps us to develop some equations okay and this equation then can be used to kind of model the process okay so once you have this data constitutive equation you can use this data to model for example forging extrusion or rolling process okay you can use fem model and then then, then in fem model you will know, need that to know that what is the uh, constitutive relation um, this material follows okay that is how the the model will be able to calculate that what will be the strain or strain rate at different uh, location okay and flow stress so you can divide the whole thermomechanical processing based on strain rate in in different segments okay so you have creep at very low strain rates okay so strain rate in this direction your strain rate is going down and in this direction strain rate is increasing so you have creep then superplasticity then conventional thermomechanical processing then you have ballistic kind of deformation very high strain rate okay so there are different ranges of strain rate here okay and that defines different type of processes which you can uh, model or which you can you, you can create a constitutive equation for these uh, different uh, deformation conditions okay so this is a constitutive equation uh, a, a simple type uh, one of the types okay which is uh, what we try to develop okay to then predict that what will be the response of the material as a function of strain rate and temperature and another thing we uh, try to do through this laboratory experiments okay is uh, what we call as development of processing map okay so why we want to do that is for the for an engineer who is uh, practicing uh, or who's uh, in the industry looking after the processes okay for him knowing all this uh, condition stress strain rate uh, it doesn't make sense okay he wants a very clear uh, instruction that what will be the uh, window within which he can uh, process the material so what temperature he should keep okay or he should heat the ingot before deformation what amount of strain he has to give and what will be the velocity of deformation process that means what will be the strain rate window for him so if we can get a window uh, like that okay where we can get a defect free material okay and also which gives you a refinement uh, in the grain size that means it, it should have a recrystallization zone condition at that particular window then that is the window ideally we would like to give it to uh, to the industry or to the process engineer okay and uh, to know that okay we have to develop using all this output of stress strain rate uh, of uh, output of stress as a function of strain strain rate and temperature okay we developed what we call as processing map okay so you can see on the x axis it has temperature 
y axis it has strain rate okay, and some contours are shown here. Okay. Uh, we will discuss this uh, later on uh, when we will discuss uh, about processing map. Okay. Just to give you an idea that basically we are looking for the regions which uh, gives you higher efficiency. So, this efficiency translate into the microstructural changes in the material. Okay. So, we look for all these high efficiency zones okay. and this will give you an idea that okay, this kind of window if I work in okay, that will give me the defect free uh, microstructure okay. and I want to avoid all this region which is showing with hatching okay, gray area this I want to avoid and I want to do the processing in the high efficiency region. Okay. So, in this particular course basically what we are going to do we are going to understand all this how to develop constitutive equation, how to develop processing map and understanding of texture okay. and what are the different processes. Okay. So, that when we do laboratory experiments we should be able to translate those result into uh, in industry. Okay. And uh, development of all this will be carried out as modules. Okay. So, one module will be on constitutive equation, one module will be on processing map, one module will be on understanding of crystallographic texture and so on. Okay. So, overall that will be able to help you in, uh, in implementing uh, the, the laboratory experiments to the industry. Okay. So, with that uh, uh, I would uh, uh, want to thank you for the attention uh, to this particular lecture okay and i hope that uh, you will be able to get benefit out of this particular course okay for your course work as well as if you are if you want to go in industry or if any engineer who is already practicing engineer okay i hope he should be able to get some benefit out of this particular course thank you